Did you know that sometimes two telescopes are better than one? The Large Binocular Telescope, LBT for short, has dual mirrors side by side and they function like a pair of giant eyes gazing into the cosmos. But what's the benefit of having two mirrors instead of one? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and last week, thanks to my dear friend Dr. Kai Polstra and the LBT team, I gained exclusive access to explore cutting edge technology behind this groundbreaking research facility. In this week's video, let's take a look at my visit. So during my recent trip to the University of Arizona, I was fortunate to get a tour of the Large Binocular Telescope, LBT for short. It's located two hours from campus on Mount Graham. I say two hours, but actually the mountain is so high and the terrain so difficult to traverse, it actually takes another hour to actually reach the telescopes from the base camp at the bottom of the mountain. Since most of the road up the mountain track is dirt track, it's actually super hard to even hire a car and get us off road. But in the end, we managed to get a private rental of a Jeep Wrangler, and I'm so glad that we did because it was super bumpy going up those steep and tight turns. When we get to the base of the mountain, we need to check in at base camp. And this is next to a high security prison, so they're really funny about photos and videos. Actually, there's signs all over warning of picking up hitchhikers in case they turn out to be escaped felons. But somehow I managed to sneak a selfie. The staff on duty make us sign in and in particular, we have some short training on red squirrels. That's right, the mountain is home to the Mount Graham red squirrel, an endangered species. Because whilst most of the mountains are lush and green with coniferous forests, between the mountains, the land is dry and dead. The squirrels like the mountain, they don't want to leave. So they're really unique here, they don't go out and breed. Anyway, the rules are there. Don't touch, don't take, don't feed, or definitely don't kill any squirrels or you'll end up with a nasty fine or even in the jail across the road. There's also these yellow lines all over the mountain to make sure you don't wander off and harm their precious furries. In any case, we set off with the gate keys and the radio for communications with the people around us. Like most telescopes, the LBT is high up, and this is because the thinner atmosphere gives us clearer skies and less atmospheric distortion from turbulence for observations. The elevation also helps in reducing the light pollution from atmospheric interference. The LBT sits at an altitude of about 3,200 meters above sea level. So there's so much less oxygen than at sea level, and this can make some people sick, dizzy, and short of breath. So we make a short stop halfway up the mountain by a massive lake to acclimatize and take in the breathtaking views of Arizona. For this reason, alcohol is a big no-no when you're observing. And of course, we were careful of bears and mountain lions, but supposedly they're more scared of us than we are of them. When we finally make it to the top, you realize how massive this thing is. There's actually three telescopes up here. There's the Vatican telescope, yes, actually owned by the Vatican, and the submillimeter telescope, which explained why we had to turn off our phones when we passed the gate. The LBT telescope consists of two primary mirrors, each 8.4 meters in diameter. Like a pair of binoculars, they're mounted side by side, separated by 14.4 meters. And they operate on a single mount, so they can do interferometry, which means both mirrors can be pointed at the same object in the sky at the same time. And by combining the light from both of these mirrors, you get an effective mirror diameter as large as the distance between the two mirrors, allowing for extremely high resolution imaging comparable to a telescope much larger in size. The LBT has the same light gathering ability as an 11.8 meter wide single circular telescope and the resolution of a 22.8 meter wide one. 
This, combined with the advanced adaptive optic system, allows the LBT to get 10 times sharper images than the Hubble Space Telescope. The difficulty in manufacturing and transporting the mirrors also made the case for having two smaller ones rather than one giant massive one. The mirrors were created beneath the University of Arizona's football stadium using a spin casting method. So this is where the molten glass is spun around in a gigantic oven to create a very thin layer. The centrifugal force naturally forms it into a parabolic curve, so there's less grinding and polishing needed later on. It also allows for the creation of a honeycomb structure within the mirror by leaving gaps in the glass, which are then sealed and evacuated to create this honeycomb-like pattern. The result is a mirror that is both strong and lightweight compared to a solid glass mirror of the same size. This has fantastic thermal stability because large thick mirrors are more susceptible to thermal expansion and contraction. This can distort the produced images. You really need to control the temperature and how it dissipates perfectly. Then there's the logistical challenge of actually getting those mirrors up the mountain. The route is over 100 miles long, traversing narrow, steep, windy mountain roads. And in the middle of the night, to minimize the impact on traffic and to avoid the heat of the day, which could potentially cause thermal expansion and again distort the mirrors. They had these giant bulldozers in front and behind to clear the way, dragging and pushing the mirrors as they went. And sometimes the roads got so narrow that they actually had to tilt the mirrors on their sides. I find it really impressive that they managed to do this whilst being mindful of all those endangered red squirrels. I mean, this thing is massive. Just to get to the base of it was five stories of stairs. The mirrors are generally open. There's nothing protecting them from the outside once the domes open. And over time, the reflective coating on the mirrors degrade due to exposure to the elements, dust, and other things like the occasional bat collision. This degradation can affect the mirror's reflectivity and consequently the quality of the images captured by the telescope. So to maintain the high quality observations required for astronomy, every year they need to resurface the mirrors. But thankfully, that doesn't mean taking the mirrors back down the mountain. The reflective coating on the mirrors is a thin layer of aluminium. So they can remove this with acids and other chemicals. And then to apply a new coating, they have a vacuum chamber on site. And this thing is massive. It's the size of the mirrors themselves. This is craned over to the mirrors, attached on, so that the new aluminium is vaporized and in a controlled manner and settles evenly on the mirror's surface. This process ensures a highly uniform and highly reflective coating. But in practice, it's never as shiny and perfect as you might think. You see, the LBT has a massive moth problem. They're in the middle of nowhere. They're the brightest thing for miles. So it's no wonder that moths will flock to the light here. And you see that every room, every hallway, there are these insect lights and piles of dead moths. The problem with resurfacing mirrors is that it's not uncommon for the moths and other insects to be welded onto the mirror. Apparently, it's not much of a problem though. And while speaking of bright lights, the LBT employs a laser guide system called Argos. They're basically giant laser beams that make artificial stars in the Earth's atmosphere. This artificial star is to serve as a reference point for measuring atmospheric distortion. As the laser light passes through the atmosphere, it's affected by the same atmospheric turbulence and distortions that light from real celestial objects like stars and galaxies would experience. So by observing the way the artificial star light flickers and distorts, the adaptive optic system can gauge the atmospheric interference and then correct for it. But these lasers are insane. They're insanely bright. You have to clear not only airspace for planes, but also when they operate, you have to clear away satellites because they're so strong that they can cut through steel. But the information gathered from them allowed the mirrors to be adjusted in real time. The LBT's primary mirror is a deformable mirror, which means that it can be bent and twisted to compensate for the distortions caused by the atmospheric turbulence. Small actuators are attached on the back of the mirror, and these make rapid, precise adjustments to the shape, pulling and pushing the mirror, counteracting the atmospheric distortion to make these incredibly sharp images. 
Now the LBT has access to so many different instruments that I would be here all day if I were to talk about them. But it's really great that the two mirrors don't have to be hooked up to the same instrument. You could have two different instruments operating at the same time. The large binocular camera is an optical and near UV imager. Well, actually it's two cameras, one optimized for blue light and the other for red light. Lucy is a pair of near infrared spectrographs and cameras used for high resolution imaging and spectroscopy. It was actually originally called Lucifer, but there were some huge conspiracies about why the Vatican was operating a telescope on a holy mountain next door to Lucifer. So it had to have its name changed in 2012. And Pepsi, oh my God, this high resolution spectrograph is so big, it filled up a massive room. We could barely move inside of it. Now there's so much more to be said about the LBT. It's been operating since 2005, so it's kind of old, but it continues to do great stuff because it's so easy to swap and upgrade the instruments when your telescope is not in space. The telescope has contributed to a wide variety of science like the study of exoplanets, dynamics of galaxies, black holes, formations of stars and planetary systems. It's an amazing piece of tech, but that's all I've got time for. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.